Hello everyone and welcome to our today's class. Uh, we are looking at physics form 2, uh, the two topic turning effect of a force and equilibrium and the center of gravity. So if you are joining me for the very first time, I take this opportunity to welcome you and thank you for joining me. So under turning effect of a force, uh, we'll start with the moment of a force and we'll start by knowing what is moment so we'll define moment moment of a force and we normally say moment of a force uh, is the turning effect of the force so the two words are used concurrently so when we talk about moment of a force uh, we are talking about the turning effect of a force and uh, it is defined as the product of force and the perpendicular distance from the point of support uh, moment of a force so uh, the product of force and the perpendicular distance from the point of support the product of force and the perpendicular distance from the point of support taking the a case for example uh, the diagram I have here so if we have a force force F here and uh, this is the pivot so this is the distance So the force is being applied at this point and the perpendicular distance is from point uh, where we have the pivot to where we have the force. And uh, therefore we will talk about uh, the moment of a force uh, taken from this point of support. And as we are talking of, as I'm saying, it should be perpendicular from this point of support so mathematically therefore we'll say uh, moment or moment is given by force times distance so the force should be in Newton and the distance should be uh, in meters so then from there uh, we'll talk about uh, the next thing and uh, the next part is uh, now how we take moments so we have so many cases of examples where we talk about moments and uh, before we talk about those cases i uh, will talk about the si unit of moments of a force and uh, the si unit is a newton per meter or newton meter uh, since we are talking about the product of uh, force, force which is in Newton and the distance which is in, in meter, so we talk about uh, the SI unit as the Newton meter. So the other thing is about the factors that affect moment of a force, the factors. Uh, factors affecting moment of a force. So we'll talk about uh, two factors. So one is the the amount of force. So the amount of force. So the more the force, the greater the moment. The lesser the force, uh, we'll also have the moment being less. And then the other point, uh, the other factor, we have a perpendicular distance. perpendicular distance so perpendicular distance uh, for this reason we have uh, the force or the moment would increase uh, with perpendicular distance increasing so in short 
uh, moment is uh, directly proportional to the force and also to the perpendicular distance from the point of support. So case examples uh, where we have uh, our forces producing turning effect. So when you are opening a, or closing a door, so you apply a force against a certain distance. Uh, that is uh, an example of moment. Again, when uh, operating or when we talk about a pair of scissors, or again when children are praying in a seesaw, that is a moment of a force in practice, and uh, so many others. So from there, we'll talk about uh, the principle of moment. So principle of moment. of moments and under principle of moment I'll talk about uh, now how we take moments we have agreed that moment is taken from the pivot uh, to where the force is acting so when you talk about the principle of moment so if you consider a bar uh, pivoted at the at a certain point we call that equilibrium and then we have some forces or some masses hand on both ends two for that case so two forces and those forces their mass are known so we'll call them weight one uh, weight two then these others weight three and weight four and then uh, we have uh, these or we give these uh, for the weight one we give it distance from the pivot we call it d1 and weight two we give uh, we call it its distance d2 and then uh, weight three its distance from the pivot we call it d3 and the other weight uh, weight four we call its distance from the pivot d4 and now how are we going or how can we take moment uh, from uh, in such a case so we'll be talking about or I'm talking about force force from the pivot or force times distance from the pivot so if I'll say or if I say uh, we have uh, this force W3 and W4 taking this bar in a clockwise manner so we call those uh, clockwise and we'll talk about or they are taking the the bar in a clockwise way well w1 or weight 1 and w and weight 2 if they are allowed to hang on this bar it will be anti clockwise It will be anticlockwise. By that I mean, so when we are taking this moment from the pivot, and if this bar is uh, at equilibrium, it means they are balancing. And that is when we draw, the, uh, we bring this into conclusion and say, the sum of the clockwise moments and the anticlockwise moments are equal. And uh, by this I mean, if you are to take individual moment, we take the moments for W3 and W4, and we'll say W3 times distance 3 plus W4 times distance 4. Uh, by W, we mean the weight 4. Eh? This should be equal to W1 times distance 1 plus w2 times distance 2 so in short what I mean or in short what we get is that uh, the sum of clockwise clockwise moments is equals to the sum of anticlockwise moment
So the sum of clockwise moment is equals to the sum of anticlockwise moment. So, and uh, this is what we call uh, the moment or the moment of a force. And for that bar to balance at that particular point, the sum of clockwise moment should be equal to the sum of anticlockwise moment. And that gives us the summary about the, the principle of moment. And uh, the principle of moment states that for a system in equilibrium, the sum of clockwise moments about a point must, is equal to the sum of anticlockwise moment about the same point. And which point are we talking about? We are talking about the same pivot. So we are not changing uh, the pivot, but we are talking about it as one. So therefore, that takes us to the conclusion about the sum of clockwise moment or about the principle of moment which states for a system in equilibrium the sum of clockwise moment is equals to the sum of anticlockwise moment about the same point and uh, that takes us to an example so uh, we look at an example on how we apply moments and then uh, that will take us to the next step So if we have uh, if we have a question or if we have a, a bar which is balanced at a certain point and some forces are acting on both ends. So we are supposed to consider so force one, force two, force three and force four. So we are supposed to consider the force that is acting, that is clockwise, and the force that is anticlockwise. So the sum of uh, clockwise moment should be equal to the sum of anticlockwise moment about the same point. So without changing the point, which is now our pivot. So uh, having or doing an example will take us to the next. Uh, example or the next part uh, that is uh, we are talking about the topic uh, equilibrium and center of gravity so in short the principle of moment or the principle of moment states that for a system in equilibrium the sum of clockwise moment about the same point is equals to the sum of anticlockwise moment. So an example. So we have a. Well, I have a question here. A girl. So, a boy of mass forty kilogram sits at a point two meters from the pivot of a seesaw. Find the weight of a girl who's, who can balance the seesaw by sitting a distance of 3.2 meters from the pivot, taking gravitational field strength to be 10. So as I'm saying, we'll talk about, so the formula we are saying, sum of clockwise moment. Sum of clockwise moment is equals to sum of anticlockwise moment. So in the in this case now we are going to look is it the girl or the boy who is uh, moving the pivot in a clockwise manner and if you may look so when the girl is sitting at this position he she is the one who will uh, push the seesaw in a clockwise manner and therefore we are going to take the force of the girl and in this case we are not aware so we call it f we multiply that by 30 meters 
the distance of the girl from the pivot and this will be equal to the force of the boy so we change uh, the weight of the boy into a force so 40 by 10 to make it a, a force and uh, then we multiply by the distance from the pivot which is 20 meters and uh, then so this is 10 so this is 400 by 20 and uh, that, then this is 30 f so the force is 400 times 20 we divide by 30 so we are saying that the weight of the girl will give us the clockwise moment and that of the boy will give us the anticlockwise moment so for them to balance on the seesaw then the moment should be equal so uh, finding the f from uh, your calculator so we get 400 by 20 then we divide this uh, we have the answer divide this by 30 so we get that the the force of the girl is 266.6 or 0.7 newton but remember these this is not a weight oh this is weight so uh, the girl's mass so mass of the girl so we are going to divide this by 10 we divide by 10 and we find that the girl's weight or mass is 226.67 kilogram 26.67 kilogram uh -huh. so that marks the end of that uh, brief uh, about the topic so maybe we can talk about some other things in the same topic so under the same topic we talk about uh, the parallel and antiparallel forces and majorly we talk about the antiparallel forces so when we talk about antiparallel forces or we call it a couple uh, we re this refers to so antiparallel forces So these refer, so we are call it a couple or couples. So antiparallel forces refers to equal parallel but opposite forces. So equal equal parallel but opposite forces. So when you talk about equal and uh, parallel opposite forces, it means uh, the total moment of antiparallel forces is the product of one of the forces and the perpendicular distance between the forces. So if we have uh, such a case and we have a uh, force F and another one here, so this is the distance between the two forces, the two antiparallel forces, the distance. So for moments of uh, such a case or moment or moments of antiparallel forces will be the one of the forces. One of the force times the distance, the separating distance between the two forces. And when we talk about one of the forces, uh, we mean one of the forces because these forces are equal but opposite and are parallel at the same point. So, which are these situations when we talk about or the examples of a couple or antiparallel forces? Uh, we have so many cases, example like. Uh, the force are uh, applied when opening a water tap opening a water tap so that force that is involved 
uh, is a couple because you apply two forces uh, in different direction or the forces that are opposite uh, for the tap to be opened another case is a force applied uh, on the steering wheel of a car so you apply one of the force using your left hand side there and the other one you pull you like pull so we are talking about that the steering wheel so you apply a force on this direction and another one on this direction for the wheel to turn and then so the distance the separating distance for that case is the diameter so if this is force and this is force so the moment will be one of the force times the distance which is the diameter of that uh, wheel so again force applied on a bicycle handle so when one is riding a bicycle so we've talked about uh, steering wheel a bicycle handle again in a bicycle handle uh, we have uh, one of the force applied to uh, that direction while another one applied to this direction and of course we have the turning point here but again we'll take uh, the distance the whole distance d and we call it d so that marks the end of a uh, topic uh, that is the turning effect of a force so there are so much related with the other one we are about to discuss uh, we talk about equilibrium and center of gravity equilibrium and center of gravity so under equilibrium and center of gravity uh, we talk about similar things to turning effect of a force <clears throat> so we talk about the center of gravity so as uh, we have equilibrium and center of gravity so we talk about the center of gravity and we abbreviate it as COG so we talk about COG and uh, the center of gravity of a body uh, is actually where the whole weight of a body appears to act or the position the point where the point where the whole weight the point where the whole weight of a body appear to act to act from so if you balance a meter rule for example are using a string or a thread uh, you realize that it will tend to balance at the 50 centimeter mark uh, because we know that the meter rule is uh, is uniformly made so it will appear to balance at the 50 centimeter mark and that means at that 50 centimeter mark that is where we have the center of gravity of the meter rule the center of gravity of that meter rule and actually we can use our hand and uh, try to balance or try to balance the meter rule and uh, the meter rule will not fall off on either side so if we have again a uh, a piece a rectangular piece of wood and you join its diagonals using a ruler where the diagonal meets you try to balance that using uh, one of your finger or a pen you will find that the the piece of wood would balance and therefore it means that is the center of gravity or the cog of that uh, rectangular piece if you have a square piece again we join its diameters uh, not diameter but its diagonals they meet at a point and again that is where we, we have the cog and uh, that's where the weight of that particular object appear to act 
if it is a circle we join uh, two diameters again that's where it's how we have and i'm sure we've looked at these uh in uh, class and uh, some different shapes and the po where the position of their center of gravity appear to act we also know that the weight is given by mg so the weight of an object act, act at that particular point <clears throat> that is uh, the point where or or its weight act from so then we move on now <coughs> combining the cog and what we learned are about uh, turning effect of a force therefore it means any piece of wood or a meter rule has weight and that takes us to a question uh, we will be able to look at and solve that involve now weight of the rule of the meter rule so in this question here the figure one shows a uniform meter rule pivoted at the 30 centimeter mark it is balanced by a weight on two newton uh, suspended at the five centimeter mark so one thing we've been told it is a meter rule so its length is 100 centimeters and therefore we've said the weight 100 centimeters all one meter so uh, we know at the 50 centimeter mark that is where the weight of the meter rule act and therefore in this case under uh, equilibrium and center of gravity we will consider the weight of the rule at that particular mark and therefore when we talk about the sum of clockwise movement should be equal to the sum of anticlockwise movement the weight of the rule is also included and in this case so for us to solve the uh, the weight uh, of this rule because the question is uh, uh, calculate the weight the weight of the meter rule so we are going again to consider sum of clockwise moment and we say sum of clockwise moment is equals to sum of anti-clockwise moment and that is the point we talk of now i will talk about clockwise moment so the weight if uh, pulled is the one which will give uh, the clockwise moment so we'll talk about the force which is w times the distance from the pivot so the distance from the pivot is this distance and we know this is the 50 centimeter mark and therefore 50 minus 30 we have 20 so 20 over 100 to make it meters uh, this should be equal to we were told it is balancing at uh, these two newton is at 5 so the remaining distance is 30 minus 5 so this is 25 and therefore we are going to talk about the force 2 newton we multiply by the distance 25 divide by 100 and uh, now uh, taking these to the calculator we have these as uh, 0 0.2 weight w is equals to uh, we have uh, 2 2 by 25 over 100 we have a half which is 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 so to get w we divide by 0 0.2 and by 0 0.2 so we get weight to be uh, 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.2 and we get the weight of the rule to be 2.5 newton 2.5 newton and that will start to be uh, the answer so another example we have uh, one here and we have uh, 
the system in the figure 2 is in equilibrium in equilibrium means it is balanced at the center determine the weight of the bar so the weight of the bar to mesema the weight acts at the at the center so at the 50 centimeter mark so again we'll say a sum of clockwise moment is equals to sum of anticlockwise is equals to sum of the anticlockwise moment and the clockwise moment weight is providing that because at this point the bar would move in a clockwise manner so then times the perpendicular distance so if we have uh, this being uh, 30 then at this point we have 50 so it means this is 20 to make it to 50 so we are talking of 20 over 100 this should be equal to the sum of anticlockwise moment so this one gives the anticlockwise moment so 5 newton and it is at the edge so 5 times the distance from the pivot which is 30 so 30 all over 100 and then we solve for w and we find that uh, this will be 0.2 w is equals to uh, 0 0.3 times 5 1.5 1.5 and uh, dividing by 0 0.2 and by 0 0.2 we get that w uh, is equals to 1.5 divided by 0 0.2 w is equals to 7.5 newton and that is now the weight of the loop uh, finally another question on another dimension and uh, we'll talk about another one or this one Figure 3 shows a uniform bar of length 1.0 meter pivoted near one end. The bar is kept in equilibrium by a spring at balance as shown. Given that the reading of the spring balance is 0 0.6, determine the weight of the bar. Again, we are talking about uh, we are talking about sum of a clockwise moment so sum of clockwise moment being equal to sum of anti anti-clockwise moment now uh, that uh, is our point to take and uh, we <coughs> are also talking about or oh, that should be the formula we consider sum of clockwise moment is equal to sum of anti-clockwise moment so then we need to identify which are clockwise moments and which are anti-clockwise moments in this, in this case. So the spring balance offers or is uh, holding the bar from falling off. So it is offering the anti-clockwise moment. Because if this is the center, the weight is acting at this point. So the weight is uh, moving in an anticlockwise manner the weight of the bar if you this is anticlockwise while this is preventing the 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 beam from falling so it is acting in clockwise manner so the clockwise manner is now where we have uh, the spring balance and we have so the force times the distance and the distance we take is from the pivot so from this point to the pivot sorry we forgot i uh, forgot to indicate this uh, was uh, supposed to be 10 centimeters 
not drawn to scale so we have uh, if this is 10 centimeter and this is 20 centimeters and we are talking of a meter rule so that is 100 minus 30 so making this to be 70 so therefore we are going to talk about the force the force and the force is actually what is the reading in the spring balance so 0 0.6 we multiply by the distance which is 70 over 100 and this is equals to the sum of the anticlockwise movement which for this case is the weight so the weight of course this is at the 50 centimeter mark so we're going to talk about the force which is weight we don't know or we are trying to find the weight we multiply by the perpendicular distance from the pivot so this distance is actually so if the whole of this is 50 so it means 50 minus this 20 we have 30 which is up to this point so we have times 30 over 100 30 over 100 or uh, to change that into meters and uh, computing these you get 0 0.6 uh, multiplied by 70 over 100 and uh, we get this to be 0 0.42 this is equals to uh, 3 3 or 0 0.3 w 0 0.3 w so we divide by 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 and we get that w is equals to so 0 0.42 divided by 0 0.3 and we get the weight to be 10 newton and that now will be the weight of the bar the weight of the bar so that um, marks the end of the calculation uh, maybe to briefly talk about the other things we talk about in uh, the same topic uh, in about five minutes we end we talk about the equilibrium states the equilibrium states and under equilibrium states we talk about uh, the states of equilibrium and we have three states of equilibrium which is uh, the stable unstable and the neutral so equilibrium equilibrium states so under equilibrium states uh, we talk about the types of uh, equilibrium states and uh, and before we talk about that so the state of equilibrium refers to the st state of balance of a body the state of balance of a body And we have three states of equilibrium, namely stable equilibrium. So one stable, stable equilibrium, and a body is regarded to be stable if, on application of a little force, it tends to get back to its original state. Uh, because it wants to remain stable so if you try disturbing it it will tend to get back to its uh, original states of equilibrium so that is about stable equilibrium so when you talk about unstable or unstable state a body is in unstable equilibrium if it's on being disturbed it does not return to its original position but occupy a new position for example when a funnel when a funnel is at that state and you try to push it a little bit remember its center of gravity is up here so it will fall off and i it will not get back to the state it was initially because it is trying as much as it can to lower its center of gravity and on falling off 
it lowers the center or its center of gravity. So three, we have neutral, neutral state, and under neutral state of equilibrium, uh, we have, for example, a ball. So a body is said to be in neutral equilibrium state, even being displaced a little bit. It occupies a new position similar to the original state. But note, on this case, the center of gravity does not change. So if a ball is kicked along the ground, it will roll, occupies another state, or occupies another point, but its center of gravity will remain to be where it was. And uh, then we say, uh, for that instance, that ball is at stable equilibrium. Is at stable equilibrium. So there are some conditions for equilibrium. Uh, we talk about condition of equilibrium. So uh, the sum of forces on the body in one direction is equal to the sum of forces acting on the body in the opposite direction. That is one condition of equilibrium. Uh, another condition of equilibrium, we have the sum of clockwise moment about a point should be equal to the sum of anticlockwise moment about the same point. Those are the two conditions of equilibrium. And then lastly, we'll talk about uh, factors affecting stability of a body. Factors affecting stability of a body. Factors affecting stability of a body. And these uh, factors are one, position of uh, center of gravity of a body. So the lower the position of center of gravity, the more stable a body is. So if the center of gravity of a body is too low, that body is said to be very stable. And then we have the base area. The base area. A body is more stable when the base is wide. A narrow base makes the body to be less stable. A narrow base makes uh, the body to be less stable. And we have different uh, examples of application of stability. And one, uh, we all talk about uh, racing cars, e.g. the Formula One cars. They are made to be so short and with wide base. One reason they are short to lower they are center of gravity, so enhancing stability. They also have a wide base to make sure uh, the center of or their center of gravity is lowered. Uh, when you talk about uh, when making a stool, a stool is made in such a way that its legs appear to to separate from the or we talk about it's made in that state so we are widening the or we are making the legs in that kind of a, of a manner to make sure that we increase the base area and hence enhancing stability of that body enhancing the stability of that body so we also talk about uh, many other things for example when you are jumping off from a stool so you are this position you want to jump down here there are things you do when you want to jump you just first make sure that you lean a little bit after leaning 
by leaning you are trying to lower your center of gravity again on landing you make sure that your wide, your legs are, are wider apart why so you are separating your legs to increase the base area and hence are making sure that you you lower your your center of gravity you lower your center of gravity so in that regard or in that case uh, you are making or you are making sure that you get short so lowering your center of gravity and then you make sure that you lower the position uh, of the center of gravity so uh, i will mark the i will mark the end of our lesson at that point so i was online i was uh, live on youtube and on facebook so if you like my work kindly subscribe to my youtube channel and uh, like and share to your friends have a good afternoon